Welcome back, everyone. I'm Serge. And I'm Cern. And now, Dr. Boysen, we had forgotten a kidney, and we had to change the dog around to be able to find it. Absolutely. So when we're doing our patients in lateral recumbency, if they have a fracture or something, and that's the position that they're most comfortable, we'll scan them completely in that lateral position, and then we got to try and get that gravity-dependent uh, paralumbar site, and we'll either try to tuck the probe underneath the patient, with them in lateral, or we can flip them as we've done in Penny here into the opposite lateral position if that's comfortable for them, so we can access that left paralumbar site. The other thing we can do, and we often will do, is we'll get all five sites with them in a standing position, in which case we don't have to actually change the position they're in. But for demonstration purposes, we've got Penny now in right lateral recumbency to allow us to look for that left paralumbar site. And this is essentially exactly the same thing. We're gonna trace those rids up, find that last rib, palpate that, trace that up with our fingers until we hit that spot where the paralumbar muscles push our finger out, and that's where we're gonna look for that left kidney. So Serge is gonna do that for our uh, left paralumbar site, and he's gonna pop the probe in with the marker towards the head, and there's our kidney in long axis. And the questions that we're gonna ask and answer with that probe in long axis, we're gonna fan off one side, we're gonna fan off the other side, we're gonna make sure we have no free fluid in the uh, abdomen at this location, and we're also gonna look for retroperitoneal free fluid at this site as well, so we'll make sure we have no retroperitoneal injury or fluid accumulating in the retroperitoneal space or the abdominal space. And just like on the right paralumbar site, they also are gonna look for the short axis, and we're gonna fan all the way through one side of the kidney and fan all the way through the other side of the kidney, again, looking for free fluid or looking for retroperitoneal fluid. And because this is the non-gravity dependent site, we're gonna look for that free air at this location as well. So we're gonna find that peritoneal lining as we see again here, and we're just gonna check for that reverberation artifact and enhanced peritoneal stripe sign to look for the presence of free air in the abdomen at this location as well. And the final thing, surgery in short axis, so at this left paralumbar site, the left kidney usually tends a little bit easier for us to be able to identify and assess that renal pelvis for dilation. Again, more applicable in cats than in dogs. So Serge has the short axis here and he's just gonna fan slowly back and forth until he can pick up that paralumbar left renal pelvis in short axis. So again, he's just, there we go, we're just looking for that renal pelvis and we're looking for that Pac-Man coming off the renal pelvis. And again, in a normal cat or dog, it's pretty rare that we'll see any dilation, so it's not uncommon not to see that very clearly at all in our healthy patients. We're also seeing the spleen come in here, Dr. Boysen. And this is that left paralumbar site, and we often find the tail of the spleen here. And when we actually fan through that, again, nice spot. There it is, beautifully demonstrated. We want to look for free fluid between the kidney and the spleen, like you see here, or surrounding that uh, spleen at this site. Complements that umbilical site we talked about earlier very nicely when it comes to looking for free fluid. And that is the left paralumbar site.